Operation Warp Speed Chief Advisor, Dr. Monsef Slawi. Doctor, I want to begin by saying congratulations to you and your team for this remarkable accomplishment. Good morning, Chris, and thank you for having me, and thank you for your nice words. Of course, thousands and tens of thousands of people have participated to uh, this first critical milestone. I want to congratulate Pfizer and BioNTech, who are really the, the key players in delivering these vaccines, and it's a, it's a very good day for America and for the world. I, I want to ask you questions about both the, the short term and the long term. How long before your first two top priority groups, uh, healthcare workers on the front line and nursing home residents, before they're fully vaccinated, get both of their doses of the Pfizer vaccine? So we plan to have about 40 million doses of vaccine available to us and distributed in the U.S. by the end of this year, so by the end of December. Those will be both Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine. And uh, uh, the next month we will have about uh, 50 million to 80 million doses of vaccine distributed in January and another uh, same number in uh, February. So all in all, we hope to have immunized 100 million people, which would be the long-term care facility people, the elderly people with comorbidities, the first-line workers, the healthcare workers, it's about 120 million people. We will have immunized 100 million people by the first quarter of 2021 with two doses of vaccine. Now, my so long-term million doses of vaccine. Now, right. Now, my long-term question: How long before we have herd immunity from the vaccine, where enough people? have been vaccinated, that we really feel that the pandemic has turned a corner, and you and I will feel safe going out in a crowd. So we need to have immunized about 75 or 80 percent of the U.S. population before herd immunity can really be established. We hope to reach that point between the month of May and the month of June. It is, however, critical that most of the American people decide and accept to take the vaccine. We are very concerned by the hesitancy that we see, the level of hesitancy that we see. Uh, but we hope that now that all the data is out and available to be discussed in detail, that people will keep their mind open to listen to the data and hopefully agree that this is a very effective and safe vaccine and therefore take it. I want to get to these questions of public doubt in a moment, but I, I want to first talk about questions uh, about supplies. Pfizer says, yes, it is going to keep its commitment and deliver 100 million doses of the vaccine in, in short order, but that it can't deliver any more doses, another 100 million or more, uh, until the summer because of contracts it has with other countries. And the main company, the one that we were betting on most, AstraZeneca, is is well behind schedule in its tests. So so the question I have is, is there a possibility that come spring, we're not going to have enough supplies to go around to continue this very ambitious distribution plan that you just talked about? Well, I think so. The short answer is most likely no, and the reason is really our plan from day one has been to have a portfolio of products. We have six different products being developed. Pfizer is one of them. Moderna, which uh, likely will be approved by, the, by Friday, probably this coming week, uh, uh, is able to produce 100 million doses in the first quarter. And we just announced on Friday that uh, we committed to uh, acquire another 100 million doses that will be delivered in the second quarter of 2021. Janssen's uh, Johnson & Johnson company uh, is in the last stages of conducting their phase three trial with their vaccine as a one-shot vaccine. That vaccine is likely to be uh, ready for uh, authorization late in January or early in February. And by then, we would be able to have uh, anywhere between 20 and 60 million doses already in the month of February available to start immunizing. And then going forward, many more doses on a monthly basis. AstraZeneca is one of them. Uh, we expect them to potentially 
uh, be approvable somewhere late in February, and then we have two more coming afterwards. So Pfizer is not the sole supplier, but having said that, we are working with Pfizer to continue helping them and supporting them achieve the objective of providing us with another 100 million doses in the second quarter of 2021. I want to pick up, Doctor, on, on the issue that you raised just before this. Uh, while Operation Warp Speed has had some remarkable breakthroughs, there is this question of public doubt about taking the vaccine. I want to put these numbers up on the screen. In a recent poll, 27 percent of Americans said they're, quote, not sure they'll get the vaccine. And 26 percent said they will not get it. I understand it's early and people's minds may change, but if more than half of Americans didn't get the vaccine, what would that mean for the pandemic? Would it continue? I, unfortunately, I think it would. And I think there will be still a lot of virus circulating, a lot of people dying, a lot of people in hospitals. I think it would be a very, very unfortunate outcome. Frankly, I'm very concerned uh, by this level of hesitancy that is not anchored in any facts or data. Unfortunately, there was so much politics around in the context of developing these vaccines that there's been a confusion between how thorough and scientific and factual the work that has been done is uh, and the perception that people are thinking that we cut corners or anything like that. I can guarantee you that no such things have happened, that we followed the science. It's actually a remarkable achievement of science, academia, the industry ecosystem, and the U.S. government working together uh, relentlessly that has allowed this to happen. And, uh, and please, just keep your mind open, look at the data, look at people who get the vaccine, how they will get protected, and be safe. And I hope most people will finally decide to take this vaccine. But let me pick up on that, doctor. You, you, you rightly say one of the concerns people have is that this vaccine was pushed through for political reasons. And, and, and there was some a new data point, if you will, on that just this week. On Friday, the White House chief of staff, Mark Meadows, called in the FDA commissioner, uh, Stephen Hahn, and reportedly said to him, approve the vaccine by the end of the day, or at least raise the possibility that he might lose his job. And that same day, Friday, President Trump tweeted this, get the damn vaccines out now, Dr. Hahn. Stop playing games and start saving lives. Question, sir, is that helpful in persuading people that this vaccine is all about the science and not about politics? I think if first those are rumors, I can't I can't know whether they are right, true or not. I do think it's not helpful because it's not needed. The day before, on Thursday this past week, there was actually a remarkably transparent discussion over the whole day, transmitted on TV live, of all the data of the Pfizer vaccine. There was a, a vote by independent experts who said yes, this vaccine is safe and effective and should be used in people that are 16 years of age and older. And the next day, the FDA was going to look specifically in some more points and more importantly, actually go through administrative steps and approve the vaccine. If uh, that phone call happened, I think it was useless and unfortunate. And so are some of the tweets. So you're, finally, as a doctor, your prescription for getting this vaccine out and people taking it would be Tell the politicians to keep quiet? I would say so, or just don't pay attention to that. I can tell you that for the last seven months, we have worked super hard in the operation with the companies, with the scientists, with everybody involved. There was a lot of noise on top of us in terms of the politics and the tweets and you know the campaigns, etc., on, on all parties. But that did never translate into any kind of interference of any sort. And I would assume that the FDA behaved exactly the same way. People can talk on top, on the news, etc., but the experts are working and doing their work in a relentless way, just focusing on the science and the data. Dr. Slawi, thank you. Thanks for taking the time to talk with us. And again, sir, congratulations on the remarkable work by you and you. by your team.